Hey guys, I uh, got my uh, shaper today. It's the um, one I was bidding on on an auction and uh, got it today. It is a uh, Delta Rockwell heavy duty uh, shaper. It is a model number 43 340, uh, dates back to 1966. Uh, I knew the cabinet maker that had this one. Um, he used it full time in his shop for. Um, I think it was a door and drawer front, uh, kind of like a raised panel edge. And um, I believe it was a single phase machine at one time and then it was converted to uh, three phase. Because uh, going back to the literature and the owner's manual, I, I found one on this particular machine on vintagemachinery.com. And I think for this particular model, I think the biggest motor you could get was like a horse and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm, I could be wrong. I know I was looking at Power Manics as well. But anyways, um, there was a three-phase option, and I do remember looking at some later models. Um, the reversing switch would have been the option for um, your motor direction. The uh, older single-phase model with the repulsion induction motor, there was actually a little lever on the top end or on the shaft end of the motor that you would slide over, which would reposition the brushes and make the motor run in the other direction. So basically be switching polarity just with the lever. Uh, but like I said, this one here is outfitted with a three-phase motor. Um, and going by the motor itself, and I got some information off the plate, this is a NEMA 66 frame, which is, um, like I said, it's a NEMA frame. I don't remember exactly what the uh, year of manufacture of this era would be, but um, I do remember reading um, somewhere on uh, vintagemachines.com, either in a Delta manual or a Delta catalog, they were saying that there was some machines with the serial number after a certain point that it had a newer style motor plate that would accommodate the old style pre neoma frames and then the neoma frames. So um, I did pick up a new three horsepower Lisan motor today, 230 volts. Uh, luckily the motor distributor I work with, he got this one in by accident. It was supposed to be a 1725, it was a 3450, which actually worked out perfectly. The only disadvantage is um, I realized the other night after I talked to him, before I picked it up, that on the Delta Shapers, the conduit box is on the other side of the motor. And the biggest reason on single phase units was is they typically put a toggle switch here to change the direction of the motor. Um, this motor has a actual hole for a toggle switch as well, but it actually would be on the back side. And the thing I'm questioning right now is, is if there's enough room on the other side of the motor. So uh, it may be that I need to return this motor and actually spend a few more dollars and get in a uh, different, um, I think it's an F3 mount is where the uh, box is on this side. So I know that's the way the, the newer Delta Shapers are as well. I think all the Delta Shapers actually, the conduit motor or the conduit box on the motor was always on this side, single or three phase. So anyways, um, the one thing you might notice is that this, um, the fence is running across the table and this is the way it typically was when they first came out and then uh, just recently again they started offering this configuration with two extension tables um, the ones in the uh, 80s and 90s typically uh, did not have uh, excuse me did not have two extensions they had extension on the front here and then this was the front of your machine. This is where your miter slot would be. Um, and now just recently again the new, I think like the X5 and some of the models previous to that, they're actually offering two extension tables again. And the extensions are bigger on the new ones. The new ones are 10 inches. These are only 8. So this table size is 36 by 27. Versus the new ones now are 40 by 27. So, anyways, uh, came with the power feed. Uh, this is a 1 6 horsepower Delta, not a quarter horse. Um, this was the first small power feed that Delta came out with, and then later on they came out with the uh, 1 6 horse. 
or I'm sorry, the one quarter horse. I have a quarter horse right now set up in one other shaper for doing uh, styles and rails, but uh, this is a one sixth horse, and this should work just fine uh, for what I plan on doing. Um, I'm planning on setting this shaper up for running door edges, so. Other than that, that is it. Just I'd get, take a quick video um, of what this is. Oh, and also I'd gotten, um, as you see here, this isn't the original fence by no means. It's just a, a couple pieces of wood clamped down with some C-clamps. And um, I actually had gotten a box of shaper parts in that same auction. And uh, here is the original fence. Notice this doesn't have the dust hood yet. Uh, that wasn't up until I think the 1970s they started adding a dust hood port to it. So this is original, and uh, got another spindle here. I briefly look at this one. This one looks to be, maybe it's used, um, and maybe there was a different shaper in one of the other auctions that got a new spindle, but I do have a spare here, so if I need, um, for bearings, I can put uh, bearings in this one if need be and swap it out, but, so yeah, here we be. And just a quick view of the inside here. There's the cutter. It's like a little raised panel, but it's not big enough for a raised panel. Um, I remember him telling me at one time that this particular cutter was a specific, was a custom cutter for, uh, I think it was a door edge uh, or drawer front edge for kind of looking like a raised panel, but it was a shallower cut. So, and then this here is actually not a um, a regular just a rub collar. This is actually a bottom half or a top half of what they call a lock edge. Uh, cutter. Basically it's where you'd grind your own knives out of some knife stock um, for molding. For molding. Um, it's called knife stock but you could use it for making molding knives and stuff like that but it's what they call a lock edge collar and the um, the knife the holding portion of the knife is corrugated on the edges and there's a uh, serrated groove cut on two sides of the spindle and Basically, um, you could grind your own knives and then set them up in this what they call a lock edge um, cutter head, and um, you know you could do your own profiles. The disadvantage is, is if you didn't know what you were doing, um, they were kind of dangerous. Just for simple fact is, if you got one knife sticking out uh, just a, a fraction of an inch versus the other, you could have a nasty kickback. So. Um, but yeah, that's actually what this is. Anyways, a lot of them that have like a bearing on the top or bottom, and that's all that this is. So, but so the next step is I'm going to uh, kind of take this thing apart a little bit. I'm probably going to uh, take the uh, extension off the front here. Um, first of all, this one actually it looks like it was drilled for a power feed at one time, and. Um, I just would like to get rid of the, or take this off and this extension is clean so I'm going to put this extension over here and then leave this one off because uh, I plan on using the shaper standing in front this way just for space reasons so I will have to move the power feed over um, to drill right here more than likely so anyways um, the next step is actually converting over to single phase and like I said to do that I'll probably take this extension off then I will lay it back so you can get down through the bottom and uh, get at that motor and the other thing I could do too is I could drop the spindle out and then lay it on its head here basically tip it upside down and then pull the cabinet off that might work too but it's going to be a little bit of a chore to get at that and I'm probably not going to video record that either just be too much hassle I want to get done with this project but I will keep you posted as I progress. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, just a brief update here. Uh, I got the old motor off. Lighting's not the best in here. Anyways, that's the old number 66 three horse. Here's a new lease on, and we got a little bit of different issue here in the frame. That's how much difference there is in the frame. However, I was able to get two bolts on this side. So I think what I'm going to do is I can't necessarily get a bolt there, but I can get one right here. This is a piece of cast. I'm just going to drill a hole there. I'm going to mount it with three holes. Uh, I can get a new mounting plate too. 
it's like 120 bucks and I want to use this thing not to, uh, not to wipe it with a diaper and uh, baby it it's gonna be meant to be used and the only other thing is um, can't see that too well it's just that the shaft is long enough um, the pulley I ordered is a Oh, it's like a 6.93 from Granger, and I didn't measure this one. Going by the catalog, it was 7, and I don't need to run 10,000 RPMs. I could run about 8,000 be perfect. Um, but anyways, the pulley I ordered is actually a fixed bore, so I can put the hub on this side here. So, anyways, that's the update for now. Um, oh, getting back to uh, cheap quality. This is a Lisan motor made in Wisconsin, I believe. Uh, the whole motor used to be steel and sheet metal. Sheet metal. Oh, plastic. Listen to that. We've gotten so cheap to use plastic now. Um, kind of a disgrace. This motor was expensive. It was about 325 bucks. But uh, anyways, enough of my ranting and raving. The only thing I think I might be able to do as far as be able to lower this or raise this motor is I have to look to see um, this here just rides on these bushings and um, I don't think I can raise this I think that's how far that sits in there so it might be SOL uh, if it doesn't work I guess I'm going to have to bite the bullet and get that plate I don't really want to because uh, like I said, it's about 120 bucks for a piece of cast iron, and I do not have a whole lot of room in the cabinet, but let me uh, set the cabinet in place, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Well, anyways, this is inside the cabinet, so got a little bit of room here. A little bit of room here. The motor is, uh, the old motor, this motor here measures about 8 inches from here to the top of capacitors, and the old motor is about the same so it's amazing the older motors how big they were and this one was actually fairly long too for a three horse but anyways I'm gonna probably put this on eBay and uh, reason I'm not using this pulley is on the Neema 66 the shaft was three-quarter not seven-eighths so I'd like to use the original pulley but I'm not going to uh, have it bored out or anything so I think I'll just clean the motor up and sell it as is and um, when I disconnected the wires, there was about an inch of sawdust in the bottom, and these wires were tied to a cord coming from that reversing drum switch. They weren't even wire nutted, they were just tied together, or twisted together, and wrapped with electrical tape. So, that could have been a severe fire hazard, or it was a severe fire hazard, and uh, probably a fire waiting to happen. So, anyways, uh, so to reverse this one here. Um, I was thinking about still putting a, a toggle switch in the back here, but that's not giving a whole lot of room to get the belt on and off without banging into that switch and maybe busting it. So, I might just make a bracket and mount a box right here, a condo box with a toggle switch. So, anyways, so that's it for the night. Uh, probably won't get this till this weekend again, but anyways, thanks for watching.